Good morning. My goodness, isn't there some special energy about a group of women? I love it. I am the oldest of three daughters. I went to all girls schools. So when I'm in a group like this, I feel I come to life. And uh, Renee, this is the 10th anniversary of our unique partnership of the University of Kansas with ABWA. And so I decided, I've been back, I went to school at KU, I came back as dean one year ago, and I said if it's the 10th anniversary and the celebrations and graduation, if the students cannot come to the dean, the dean will come to the students. First of all, I am, s thank you my dear. That's, that's actually very uniquely something that we do as women. We tend to push each other up. We don't pull each other down, which is why I want to see more and more women in leadership roles in business. That matters a great deal. All right, before I make my formal remarks, I don't know if Renee told you, but professors, we are used to two hour modules. No. <laughs> No, I promise, I promise. Uh, there are a couple of people here, a couple of organizations that I want to recognize. Clearly, ABWA, we are so grateful to you. Every one of my professors that you have had in your curriculum, Professor Beatles was my professor and my husband's professor too when, when we went to school. And it, it, you go down the list, it doesn't matter who. They talk about how much they enjoy this group I never have to coerce anybody to participate in this. It's like we want to go. So that, that's really something we appreciate, ABWA, that you've given us this opportunity. And how about a big round of thanks to Walmart? They are really investing in the future of this country. They're investing in our well-being when they invest in the women of this country. So I'm really, really thankful for that. I do want to call out, at KU, we have a very active ABWA chapter, and ask them, these young ladies will tell you, I'm always pushing them to take on a more aggressive leadership role. So I don't know where you are, but my kids are here. So the students from the University of Kansas, would you please stand? This is what is common when you come into graduation but I promise I'll keep it very, very brief. A few days ago, I was at a conference where they had a quote from Thomas Friedman. This is the guy who wrote The Wall is Flat in 2004. And he was asked to reflect upon it and make some comments about it. And what he said was the following. He said that when he wrote the book, just seven, what, eight years ago, 2004 when it was published, he said at the time, Facebook really didn't exist for most of us, right? Twitter was a sound. <laughs> the cloud was in the sky. 4G was a parking spot. <laughs> and when we said LinkedIn, we thought it was a prison. <laughs> and applications were something we sent off to college. That was just eight years ago. And he claimed at the time that the world was flat because we were all connected one to the other. So reflect now where we are. It means we, what was a connected world, ladies and gentlemen, has now become a hyper-connected world. We are all impacting one another. What does that mean for you as business women? Well, clearly what it means is that the pace of change has accelerated, right? The competitiveness of the marketplace you're in has increased. It doesn't matter where it is, right? Customer expectations are escalating. Does anyone here who have a customer says, oh no, please stop, that's too much. I can't take it from you. No, we are living in a world where the demands and expectations of us are constantly ra being raised. These were the people that he termed realistic 
optimists. It's interesting, isn't it? That's what you and I need to cultivate. Realistic optimism. I'm going to grow my business. I'm going to take on the world. Yeah, I know there will be challenges. I acknowledge it, but I can see myself move past it. I can see myself go beyond it. That's realistic optimism. What else do we need? What else do we need to cultivate resilience in our lives? A second ingredient that research shows it cuts across is a bias to action. Being able to do something, being in control of some area of your life improves the resilience overall. I'm actually curious about this question. I have to ask you, how many of you, when you're stressed out at work, will go home and try to clean up something? Because I do. I tell my husband, I've been married 28 years. I tell him that I'm saving him so much money on therapy bills because what I do, even if it's dumping out my purse and reorganizing it, it doesn't matter. But interestingly, then that's what I told him. He didn't know how brilliant I was all these years because research actually shows that taking control of some small area of our lives gives us that boost we need. In fact, Ladies, it cuts across even personal lives. In medical settings, they're showing now that if you give a patient a choice, do you want a shot in your right arm or your left arm or whatever, that's an example. Allowing a patient to make a choice, they actually report less pain and they recover better. See, some sense of control in some area of our lives. Well, what else are key ingredients? Number three, a sense of purpose. A sense of purpose. And this is uniquely human, right? All of us, all of us want to belong to something bigger than we are. Whatever that is, it gives us our sense of meaning. It could be your family. It could be your faith. It could be your community. It could be a passion you have around something. But having that sense of purpose... So I want each of you wonderful, wonderful women to remind yourself every day of the purpose that you're in business. I love what Walmart said, right? Mr. Walton, Mr. Sam said, I'm, I, the purpose was to allow poor folks to afford the same things that rich folks do. So whatever it is that's your core purpose, your driving mission that allows you to do what you do, remember that. The last point is community, belonging, having people who look out for you, boost you up, and connect you together. And I am proud of you because that's what you've created here at ABWA. So I am going to do Renee's work for you because I'm a big believer in it. Are you all going to be, what was the next place she told you? Are you all going to be in Little Rock? That's important because you formed friendships here. And it's important. The older I get, I realize this more. It's good for me to have friends who knew me when I was much younger. Right? Because it's important. I want somebody to remind me of how glorious I was at one point. <laughs> but the point is, hold on to this. Cultivate this. And let's remember that we grow when we teach. So all of you who've get, received your degrees, you are going to from us, right, in a minute. And those of you who are taking these MBA essentials, go back and teach. Teach those principles. That's the best way for you to learn, right? I know you'll all say, you'll go back and say, oh, yes, I'm going to refer to my books. I'm going to... That's not going to happen. I know your lives better than you do. So what I want you to do is when you walk, leave this conference and go home, on the way, I want you to jot down the top t 10 things you learned. And I'm not even going to say they're all from our classes. It could be a snippet that you heard from somebody. It could be an idea. Just 10 things. Make your own personal top 10 list. That's what I do, by the way, whenever I go to these conferences, because I, too, I'm so inspired, and am I going to read that? No, that's not happening. So write down your top 10 things and go back and teach it to somebody. And that way, you will remember it much longer. 
I wish you the very best and thank you for working with us at the University of Kansas. Thank you, ABWA. Thank you, Walmart. And thank you, above all, our little rock star here, Renee Street. Thank you. Yeah.